okay, I'm super happy to start building stuff. We've been kind of getting ready as we've talked about rules, and then we talked about functional groups and dehydration synthesis reaction, and now it's time to start building stuff. Carbohydrates are, of course, very important in nature, and it goes well above and beyond the dietary carbs. Um, you know, thinking about the tree out there that just weighs tons that's sitting in your front yard, it's all carbohydrate. It's all it's all cellulose. Um, think about chitin for, you know, exoskeleton for insects, also carbohydrates. Um, signaling molecules, carbohydrates. Uh, carbohydrates act as essentially molecular sponges in your body, things like arachidonic, or not arachidonic acid, hyaluronic acid to, you know, to pull water in and to hold it there and, you know, for joints. And, and it, carbohydrates are everywhere and they do a lot of things for us. We're not going to delve into all of those. We're going to focus primarily on the basic anatomy of a carbohydrate, and then we're going to talk about dietary carbohydrates. I think that's probably most relevant to us right now. And we've got a list of terms that we want to discuss. Monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide, and then talking about polysaccharides, structural versus storage, and branched versus linear. So those are some things that we want to get into. So one of the th ideas, that, the theme that this invites is as we make macromolecules, we start with a small unit, typically called a monomer, and then as we glue these things together through dehydration synthesis, we get polymers. And that's, that's what we want to do. So the monomer for carbohydrates is a monosaccharide. These actually come in various shapes and sizes. They could be three carbon, they could be four carbon, um, more commonly five carbon, like ribose, we see that. Most commonly six carbon, and that has everything to do with the fact that the ring structure itself is very stable with six. Um, but that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with glucose, which is arguably the most important monosaccharide, certainly to you. So let's draw glucose. Glucose is a six carbon sugar. It's also an aldehyde, which means that double bonded oxygen, which is a carbonyl functional group, is at the end of the molecule. And then it's covered in hydroxyl groups. There's five hydroxyl groups that we've added to that. Of course, everything else, you know, we don't often draw them, but we, we do have to consider the hydrogen, so we'll, we'll fill those in because carbon makes four bonds. If it's not shown, then it's a hydrogen, but we'll, we'll draw those in. Now, this is glucose in its linear form. But something about sugars, um, they don't really like linear form. If they're desiccated, if they're dry, uh, they might exist in linear form 50% of the time. But the minute you get them wet, wet, the minute you put them in your mouth or in water or anything like that, it's going to form a ring. And I want you to see how this happens. If you're familiar with chemistry, it's a nucleophilic attack. If not, that's okay, it doesn't matter. But let's see if we can visualize it. I'm gonna change some of these just to color coordinate. The carbonyl carbon in blue, and the hydroxyl group on carbon number five, counting from the top, in yellow. Now let's draw the ring structure and we'll see if we can follow the process. We folded the ring in on itself. What you can see is we've essentially taken this double bond up here and we've taken one of those bonds and we swung it down here to attach it to that oxygen. Of course in the process that hydrogen is going to get kicked off but now we've got an extra bond for the oxygen so we're going to end up moving it up to the top and the, the hydrogen is going to end up bonding up here. That's that's the idea behind this. Now. We don't want to talk too much about stereochemistry, but the way it's drawn linearly, it's important to recognize that if the hydroxyl group is on the right side or the left side, that's an important part of the molecule. Everything on the right side is going to be drawn down. Everything on the left side is going to be drawn up. So let's fill in the hydroxyl groups. The tricky one that we don't know is this newly formed hydroxyl group here. Do we draw it on the right or do we draw it on the left? And in reality, it could go either way. Sometimes it's going to be drawn down, but 
Also, sometimes, and we'll just use a dash line to say sometimes, it might be drawn up. Really, when it forms that ring, it's kind of got 50-50 odds of what it's going to do. And these are actually different molecules. One we call alpha glucose and one we call beta glucose. In the down configuration, this would be alpha. And if it was pointed up, it would be beta. That's going to become important as we discuss polysaccharides. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to make a disaccharide. We, this is going to, of course, be done through dehydration synthesis. So let's go ahead and make maltose, for example. This is just going to be glucose plus glucose. And we're going to use alpha glucose for this. We'll come back to beta glucose in a minute. But we're going to use alpha. As we discussed in our little video on dehydration synthesis, we're just going to remove water. There's the water right there. So we kick water out. And now we've got a disaccharide. Two monosaccharides glued together by dehydration synthesis. And we name this linkage a glycosidic linkage. And specifically, I don't know that this is super important, but if you're interested, this, this is a, an alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. That tells us the functional groups, the hydroxyl groups involved in this linkage. It's alpha because we used alpha glucose. In other words, the hydroxyl group on that number one carbon is pointed down. If we number these carbons, we see, and this goes back to the exact same numbering in the linear form. This is number one, this is number two, three, four, five, and then number six out here outside the ring. Same thing on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we can see what these numbers correspond with because it's a link between the hydroxyl group on carbon number one of this monosaccharide and carbon number four on this glucose over here, this monosaccharide. So alpha, because it's alpha configuration, one, four glycosidic linkage. Now that we've got a disaccharide, let's take the next step and let's think about polysaccharides. If we were to continue using glucose through dehydration synthesis, you can see that we can extend this in that direction and that's the pattern that we're going to see. Examples of linear polysaccharides that are important in diet. This essentially is going to be starch. Certain types of starches. Um, for linear, we're talking about amylose. So, for example, if we're thinking about complex carbs, you've probably heard of that. I want to eat complex carbs. Amylose is a complex carb simply because it's a polysaccharide. And because it's linear, it's going to take a long time to digest. Why? Well, because as, as we extend this out, right, we have this long chain. Enzymes can really chew on the ends. And so we chew on this end. We might chew on the other end. And we can break them down one piece of glucose at a time. That's going to take a while. That's why starches like amylose are not considered high glycemic index foods because I can't get all that glucose at once. It takes a while to break down. Of course, that has its limitations. Starches are great for plants as their storage form of sugar because they don't have to run from bears, right? You're out in the woods and you get you, you spook a bear and the bear's coming after you. And what do you do? You, you turn around high tail. That's probably not the smartest thing to do, but you're going to anyways. So you're running really fast. If your storage form of glucose is linear, you've got a problem. So the other thing we have to do is think about branching. Now, you and I, mammals, we store glucose in the form of glycogen. So what is it going to look like to have a branched polysaccharide. Well, I'll give you a hint. For glycogen, the linkage is called an alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage. With those numbers, can you predict where we're going to attach? Let's come over here and draw a few more glucose molecules linked together. 
And here, remember, is carbon number six outside of the ring. Well, what if we had another chain all held together by alpha-1-4 linkages coming down this way? Let's expand this so that we can see everything going on. Carbon, a hydroxyl group we'll put up here. Here's the two hydrogens. And then, of course, my other alpha glucose coming in at the top. Same idea. We see right there, there's the dehydration synthesis. H2O is removed. And now I've got my alpha 1, 6 glycosidic linkage. It tells me whenever I see that 6, that tells me that this is a branch point. And if we think about glycogen, again, the mammalian storage form of glucose, it's a highly branched molecule. You know, we might have our, this isn't exactly what it looks like, but we've got our, you know, our primary chain and we've got a branch coming off and another branch and another branch. And, and I hope you can appreciate as we extend these branches, now, if I need to access glucose quickly, I can. I'm running from that bear. Of course, this is going to give me an adrenaline rush. One of the things that epinephrine or adrenaline does, when it hits the liver, it activates the enzymes that liberate all of this glucose. So I chew up my glycogen and flood the body with glucose that I can use as energy. And it happens very quickly and efficiently. All right, the last thing that I want to talk about real fast is structural. We've talked about storage forms of glucose. For mammals, it's the glycogen. For plants, it's starches. Um, amylose is linear. Amylopectin is a slightly branched, not nearly as branched as glycogen, but it's a slightly branched starch. Those are the most common ones. But now we want to think about something structural. And interestingly, we're not going to deviate away from glucose. We're still going to use glucose, but with a twist. Remember, we talked about the alpha versus beta thing. Let's look now at what's going to happen if it's in beta form. In other words, that OH is kind of pointed up in this rendering. Well, when I want to join that with another beta glucose, recognize I'm going to, I'm going to join it to the hydroxyl group on carbon number four, but it's still pointed down like it was before. So we have to change the orientation in order to get these two things to interact with each other. In other words, we have to rotate this thing on its x-axis. So let's turn it over. Now that we've flipped it 180 degrees on its x-axis, we can use dehydration synthesis again. There's the removal of my water. And what we end up with is a beta 1, 4 glycosidic linkage. But I hope you can appreciate how it's different. Every other glucose molecule in this polysaccharide is going to be turned over. And that makes all the difference. It provides a unique three-dimensional structure that essentially equals cellulose. Now cellulose, it's a little bit more expanded than this, but that's what it is. It's beta 1,4 glucose all linked together. Cellulose it is important for our diet, but we cannot break that bond. We don't have the enzymes to break a beta-1,4 linkage. And so it's not digestible by anything except a few types of bacteria that actually have the enzyme to work on that. But we need it, right? This is, this is going to be my, my fiber that I eat. It goes through. It cleans my gut. There's no, there's no caloric worth in it because I don't break it down. But I, I still want you to recognize that, that eating fiber is an important part of a healthy diet. So hopefully that gives you a good idea as we go back and we look at what we wanted to cover. We understand what monosaccharides are. We understand that a disaccharide now is just two monosaccharides glued together by a, a dehydration synthesis using hydroxyl groups. A polysaccharide... Lots of monosaccharides glued together. And the ones we talked about specifically are just the polysaccharides of glucose. There's lots of different types, but we just focused on, on those containing only glucose. And we broke those down into two types. Storage, 
which was always alpha glucose, and it could be either linear or branched, and then structural, which is beta glucose, and that's where cellulose, that, that's what cellulose is. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what carbohydrates are all about.